Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to read a very interesting part of the book. Uh, Monohar Babu, through his writings, it's, it's not only an autobiography, it's a part of the Dalit literature, which challenges the upper caste conceptions of the Dalit community. That is, uh, I'll just take up one example and show that how the writing has challenged the upper caste conception of Dalit food habits. That is, he's coming from the normal Shudra community who used to love pork eating. Uh, and uh, pork eating was a kind of a celebration in the normal Shudra community. But this practice was looked down upon by the upper caste. So through his writing, he challenges this by actually describing very proudly everything positive associated with pork eating. And he shows how very positive emotions used to overflow when pork eating would take the form of a festival in the community. So I'll just read uh, two portions from two chapters. I start. My ma cooked pork deliciously. In my childhood, I witnessed pork eating taking the form of a festival. Faces flushed with smiles. Everyone was restless with tasks and so expressive with wordy skills. All busy in self-presentation. So, super preparations are on at your home. Should I come along? If someone uttered like this, he was sure to get an invitation. Not that they actually came. It was through such exchanges that people expressed their intimacy. <coughs> Pork would not be sold in the marketplaces openly. It was considered food for the lowly people. The so-called lowly people had to arrange for pork stealthily. That year, the pig sellers brought their drove of pigs from a far off village. The Morol, or the village headman, bargained for a large sized male pig for our community. It would be enough for everyone in the Poob Pada. <coughs> Sitting together and counting all heads, the number of shares was sorted out. Buying and eating pork was a matter associated with merriment. When in a frolicking mood, everyone wanted to do something, then a number of heads would get together and such suggestions followed. Now, there was a small thatched room to the east of our house. Chona's mother, a widow, somehow managed to live there from day to day. Her husband and son had died while she had been young. Chona's husband had made a living by working on others' fields it was while working on someone else's field that he was bitten by a snake. In spite of the best efforts of the Ojha, he could not be saved. Since then, the childless widow Chona used to live in her mother's household. Now someone exclaimed, Chona's mother is sitting in her home with a gloomy face. She is saying, the girl wants to eat pork. But where shall I get the money from? She is saying to whomever she meets. If some, the person continues, if someone wishes to eat, how will you eat without them? The belly is not big, but the human heart is very large. Make your hearts larger. There are only few people in my home. My mother, daughter and wife. Rather than giving me one share, give me two shares. One for me and one for Chona's mother. I am giving you money for both. Now when people heard that Chona's mother was not left out because she was poor, they were delighted. Thank you.